What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna go over the Cushman. I've been doing some work on the Cushman and um, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did and future plans for it as well, and why I did some things the way I did it. Also, we have some new mods, FS2 seats that we're gonna be installing on the golf cart. So with all that being said, let's jump right into it. This is a panel that comes out the golf cart on the driver's side. From, from the factory, it had a six gang, I think a six gang or four gang fuse block. So I ordered an aftermarket fuse block, six gang fuse, six gang ground. It's got the LED lights for when the fuse blows, the LED light will shine, let you know which fuse is blown. The only thing we plan on using this uh, fuse block for One's gonna be headlight, tail light, one's gonna be horn, and the other one's gonna be radio. That's it. So we got that there. We went ahead and installed the big battery distribution block here. Um, ground positive, okay? We're gonna have ground and positive going to the controller, Navitas controller, and also the lithium batteries going into here, as well as the input for the voltage converter to give us 12 volt power. Also, we got two more studs down here. For 12 volt hooking up, um, probably gonna hook two of these up to the air compressor to give us main power. And I might, you know, after thinking about it, I might go ahead and take another fuse down here for the air compressor as well to cut the relay on so it gets its power from here. Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and drop this into the golf cart. You can see kind of, you know, what it looks like. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Like I said, we still need to remove those bolts, put the bolts back through there in order to mount everything. Okay, so this plug here and this plug here actually went into the stock charger that was with the Cushman. The stock charger was also the uh, 72 to 12 volt uh, converter that had that built in. So these two wires here, this positive and negative, comes out to these two positive and negative wires here. So we're gonna be using all of those again. That was the diagnostic port. We will not be reusing that. And I figured out like this blue wire here, that's for the headlights. So we're gonna be using this blue wire again. So uh, as we figure stuff out, we'll be mounting everything, but these red and black, it's gonna go to the fuse block. And the rest of these right here will go to some of the accessories onto the golf cart, as well as these right here. I believe these are gonna go to some accessories. Not sure if we're gonna use these or not, and I'm definitely not gonna use that diagnostic port. All right guys, so once you turn the golf cart on, forward, neutral, or reverse, you'll see a little blue light over there. So this is a USB spot here for our cell phone. Now this used to have this cigarette lighter style a 12 volt socket in there. I, you know, I thought it was kind of, thought it was kind of old school. So I took that out, put the dual USB in here. Basically this whole thing is flush. It has an outside uh, panel on it. And uh, on the outside panel, once you pull it off, you have two screws to mount it. One on the left, one on the right. It's got two wires coming out, just positive and negative. Once you have it mounted, you slide that cover on there. Easy install there. Also above the FNR switch, we have the headlight switch. Now, this is not a golf cart switch. It's not made for golf carts. Uh, this is a three position switch made for boats. And um, the object here of this, I have this on all of my golf carts. This switch comes gold. And what I did is I just uh, scuffed it up with a red scotch right pad and painted it with Krylon. Now, so you pull it one time on the front of the golf cart, I utilize the amber lights. So once you pull it the first time, the amber lights cut on. You pull it again, the amber lights stay on and the headlights turn on as well. So it's kind of like an old school car, old school truck. So on the amber lights, I ordered a license plate socket. I can't remember exactly which truck it was it from. I'll, I'll place a link in the description below of that and the lights and the headlights and all of that. Um, so I was able to run the amber lights on the first pool and we put 194 LED bulbs in there. And on the second pool, I put LED lights inside those housings as well. 
I have went ahead and have ordered a new horn switch here. This horn sometimes sticks and the cover was uh, messed up on it, the waterproof cover. So I went ahead and ordered another one. It'll be in in a few days, but there's the horn. Uh, as you can see, the brake doesn't have a pad or anything on it. I put a, uh, a momentary switch on the back of the brake up against the firewall of the golf cart. So once you press the brake, we have tail lights and you can hear it. Okay, so that's what I've done there as well. Before I had both of the big battery Falcons on the passenger side for weight distribution, I went ahead and moved one of those on the driver's side and pushed both of them all the way to the back. I have a spot here in the middle that I'm going to use for a dry storage box and try to get me like a plastic um, toolbox. I'm gonna keep the charger in it, an extension cord, maybe some tools, anything that we wanna carry on with us on the golf cart, I'm gonna mount between those two rails there. On this, on the driver's side of the golf cart, there's nothing mounted on that tray there. And the reason is I have another uh, project that we're gonna be doing to the golf cart. I'm gonna be mounting it there. On the passenger side, there's a 12 volt compressor and we're gonna mount that, it's not yet mounted, but we're gonna mount that over there. And that's gonna be used to raise and lower the dump bed. All right, so we need to pull this seat off here. I'm gonna be taking this seat and putting it back with the rest of the easy go parts that I have for another golf cart build. Maybe coming up soon, maybe not, not sure yet. This is the stock backrest for this cart. I'm gonna be giving this right here away in this lower portion away to a buddy of mine that's needing that for actually a workhorse. As you can tell, this lower seat has never been mounted since I've had it. And that's not a good thing because down here on the paint, it started to rub some of the green off, so that's not good. I have new brackets we need to put up here. And in here, we need to go ahead and remove both of these hip restraints from this lower section throw a can of paint on them before we attach them to the new seats. So when I was pulling these uh, hip restraints off, obviously some of the bolts was rusted in there and everything started turning. So we're gonna have to cut these two right here out. I think I gotta cut one off the other one as well. We need to clean this, prep it up. I'm just gonna hit it with the uh, red scotch right pad and we're either gonna lay some paint or some like textured bed liner stuff on here, just to make, uh, give these right here a better look. You know, it's kind of it's kind of faded out, so we want to spruce up as much as we can. decided to go with the mods fs2 brown it's the diamond stitch or the double diamond can't remember it's got the black piping i think this right here is going to really set the card off and uh make it look good up against that hunter green so I think those came out pretty good to say we just did a little scuff and shoot. Made it, you know, one solid color. These are also quarter 20s. So I was going to put these uh, hinges on. 
looks like it's got two different measurements here. And since the previous seat didn't have the hinges, I didn't have the screws. I was looking through my parts bins. I came across this little home pack kit. Hopefully this will work. It does have the uh, countersunk or the flush uh, bits here with the head, pan head. I don't know what you, what you call it. I guess we're gonna try this front one first and see exactly where it sits at there. And then if we need to modify it, we can loosen them up and move it back. All right guys, let's see what this, what this looks like. Hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. Looks like it's gonna be sitting up higher here. Not sure if uh, I'm gonna be losing any space, but uh, I think it matches the golf cart well, this color, especially with that dark green. And uh, yeah, I like it a lot. I like these handles here since I put that bed liner on it. It's just, you know, black textured paint that looks pretty good. So yes, I'm happy with that. However, I'm not sure about one thing, and that's driving yet because, well, I'm a big one, and I don't wanna lose no more room, but this right here looks so good. Well, there it is, guys. What do y'all think? If you ask me, this brown, this black piping looks perfect with that Ford metallic green. I think it's gem green. I think it looks really good together. I also think us scuffing this right here hip restraint and the other one as well giving it some of that textured paint really helps it out looks a lot better on the card here one of the things that we need to do is probably take the steering wheel off and hit that as well with some of that textured paint just to you know liven up a little bit not look as dingy right there and if you didn't see the last video where we put the 35s on the other golf cart this golf cart here, I took the MSA flash chrome wheels off. I've ordered some MSA portals. These are also 18 inch black with the milled uh, spokes and everything. And in my opinion, that looks so much better. So there it is guys. Until next time, we'll see y'all later.